Hey guys, it's Max. How's everyone doing today? It's about 2.43 in Hill Country, so the market's just about to close. Let's see kind of how we're how we're doing today, where everything's at. All right, WDTE is killing it. I think all the defiance are up last time I checked. Yes, this one's full profit. They're making $420,000. Up one cent to share on the month. Dividend estimate, uh, $1.57. Triple QI is making a million four. Up 51 cents on the month. Dividend estimate is 98 cents. IWMY is also at full profit today, making one point three million. Okay, there it is. We're actually up sixty seven cents a share. The dividend is at two dollars and twenty seven cents, which comes to seventy eight percent. All right, USOY, they sold options that expire in a few minutes. They sold the 74 and a half strike, something like 1,975 times. Yeah, there it is. They received a buck 76. Right now, USO, which is what they're trading, is trading at 76.44, and they sold the 74 and a half, so they're in great shape. That thing's worthless right now, maybe worth the nickel. So, They've probably bought it back for a nickel, and we'll see what they do on Monday. All right, so now let's look at the index buffer report. See, the SPY was up about three quarters of a point, and most of the most of the high yield funds underperformed. XDTE got the closest at this point in the day. Nice job, XDTE, but SFall. Only got 18 bips. Now, ZIVB looks really good. ZIVB makes money from collapsing volatility. And today, in this afternoon, we had volatility collapse. Or it's it's been collapsing for a few. It's been going down for a few days. Maybe collapsing is the wrong word. All right. So, uh, but that's how ZIVB and SFAL makes money for that matter. All right. KQQ. So out of the NASDAQ ones, AIPI, which isn't really based on the NASDAQ, but it's closer. Probably should have based that one in the Russell, actually. But um, it's doing the best. FEPI looks really good. WiMAX is actually outperforming the NASDAQ at this point in the day, as is ULTY. That's great. You see the rest of them are in line. Maxi having a great day. YBTC having a great day. It's a great day when the when the market's up. Let's look at SPX. Look at that. We're going to close outside of the Bollinger Bands and on the high of the day. <clears throat> you know, that's, uh, that's ge generally bullish. So we'll see what happens next week. It's generally, it's either bullish or a fake out. So NASDAQ, same thing. It's good for these daily options, though. All these daily options are are doing great. Here's USO. Yeah, look, they wrote this 74 and a half option. Look how, look how far they are out of the money. That's a great job. Great job, guys. Okay, so now let's look at some of the yield max stocks. Let's check out the yield max buffer report. See what did the best in yield max land. Well, MSTY and MSTR absolutely killed it today, as did Tesla, as did NVIDI. But YMAX outperformed the index. We already talked about that. So did ULTY. We also already talked about that. Uh, and that's all as far as the outperformance goes. No, oh, well, I take that back. Bobo outperformed the index. Look at that. That's wonderful. 
Great job, Bob Bow. Of course, Chinese stocks have been on fire, Bob. It's a Chinese uh, e-commerce stock, and it's just been on fire lately. So check this out. I put some spreads in here. Option strat. Uh, I have Bob. Well, here's Bob's spread. It's just on a one contract per contract basis, but we can still see kind of what they're kind of what they're trying to do. Oh, well, these guys didn't even I'm sorry. Oh, these guys just have a uh, call, just have a cover call. Appear to be totally capped at this time. Um, so that one's not that interesting to look at. But look over here at. Um, I'll look at Google. This one's up big today. They're running the call spread. They sold the 123 call, they bought the 126. Right now, the price of Google looks like it's going to close between the two. So they're right here in what I call the shelf or the ledge. Had they gone up a little bit more, they would have had even more profit. But they're right here in the part of the strategy where they're kept out. That's if they haven't already rolled. You know, these spreads were as of a day or two ago. But whenever I hear of one, I put it in here. So this AMD is a new one. They rolled one of these till next week. Uh, Exxon Mobil looks really good. Oh, we just looked at that one. All right. Um, let's see what else is is up in Yield Max land. Okay, we mentioned MSTR. They're killing it. AMD, Coinbase. Well, this market's taking off again. Here's Tesla. Here's Arc, Amazon, NVIDIA. You can see everything's up today. It's been a been a great day. Look at the old NASDAQ up more than a percent. All right, let's look at Max's volatility metrics real quick. This uh, thing is still, uh, it's not working right now for some reason. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, volatility is still elevated. My, the system keys off the trends in volatility. And volatility, look at this moving average, it's still trending up even though the volatility towards the end of the day did come down and it's on the low of the day, Vol depending on what time your frame you're looking in, volatility came down at the end of the day, but has been generally trending up last week. And generally when it's over the red line, it's a warning signal. So we'll see what happens next week, but that's why the uh, system is still, uh, the system is still bearish at this point. So we'll see what happens Monday morning, but here's the thing they really, really look at and this one uh this one is even further above the the red line so you know it, it generally things don't in the market don't pick up too much until they really start selling volatility until the lease goes under the red line we'll see we'll keep an eye on that we will damn sure keep an eye on that we also have a trade this week that i did some content on uh and I'll post the link to it. It's a get out of jail free card. It goes to New Year's Eve. And what it does is it makes it where if you lose, 
you have to lose like at least 7% for the, for the protection to kick in. But if you lose 7% on a million dollar account, you're down about 70,000. So this trade would offset 45 of it. So let's see here. I think it kicks in fully at 10. It's kind of graduated, but, or at nine, it pretty much kicks in fully at uh, 9%. You have partial coverage from four to seven and no coverage under the seven. It's a $30,000 trade. It's just one option trade. It doesn't expire until New Year's Eve. It's actually a spread, but it's a, it's a ratio spread, not a diagonal, just a ratio spread that expires New Year's Eve. The market happens to go down like 30% between now and New Year's. The spread or on New Year's Eve will be worth $337,000. Your million dollar portfolio will be worth about 300,000 left, less the $37,000 extra is to help pay with taxes. There's a little bit extra in here for taxes. I'll post the link to it. I'm not real bullish on the market for the rest of the year. The market's already up so much right now. Check this out. Check this one thing out. We're going to get in the retirement simulator and see how much the market's up. Let's see if a dude just had 60, 40, which I think is what, Yeah, that's what this side is. So this dude down here <clears throat> just had uh, 60, 40. So stocks and bonds. So he's up 20% on the year. Just as spy, this is what you're trying to protect. If we have a crash in the second part of the year, see the spy, see that it's a $600,000 investment. He's up $175,000 on paper, right? All right. So if the market drops, let's say the market drops uh, 20%, he's back to he's back to even, right? But not if he puts on not if he puts on the spread. If he puts on the spread, and the market drops 20%, and it stays down by New Year's Eve, he, you have to you have to cash this in on New Year's Eve. The spreads worth two hundred and twenty thousand dollars when you cash it in. So that's enough to offset the difference. It was a, you lost about a year because you're up $175,000. That's what you're really trying to insure. You're trying to insure what you're up. Okay. But remember, it's going to cost, if you do this, it's going to cost you 29,000. So you're no longer, uh, you're no longer really up 175,000. If you do this, you're up 140, 145,000, but you're up 145,000 without the possibility of loss for the rest of the year, with the, uh, without the possibility of a major loss for the rest of the year. Now, here's the thing. You aren't totally capped on the upside either. If, if um, the SPY goes up another 10% the rest of the year, you know, it sucks that you, you've spent three of it on your hedge, so you only realize an additional 7%, but you can also realize additional appreciation in the market if the market goes up further from here. But a hedge is an expense. It costs about $2,900, which is we're going to call that 3% on a million dollar account. This hedges a million dollar account. So I'll uh, put the link to it in the notes. All right. If anyone's interested or hit me up, we can try to make one that's uh, that's right. That's uh, the right size for your account. Also, depending on what kind of stocks you have in your account, you might would rather do this with Russell or with uh, with Q's or something. Anyway. All right. I just thought that was interesting to look at um, in the option trade things. We also have. Uh, where was that? Save trades. We also have uh, this one right here. This one's a bullish Trump option trade. And th this kind of trade stands to, you know, if he gets reelected and it makes the price of his holding company, uh, DJT, go up, this trade can make a lot of money possibility. And, and also, especially if there's volatility attached to it, which I think there might be. Um, but th this trade is long volatility also. So anyway, that's an interesting trade, too. But I'm not recommending this trade. I'm not saying I'm bullish on this company or bearish. We're just looking at this spread as kind of a precursor for Trump's chances. So it's up $90 today. And I noticed in the betting markets, which the betting markets are another extremely accurate, way more accurate than the polls. 
proxy for the chances. And the betting markets, well, Trump was up one point earlier. Now Trump's only up two tenths of a point. He's lost a little bit of ground. Whatever. It's a toss up. It's a toss up. The spread's up right now. So uh, it, the bullish spread is up right now. It also just tells us it's a proxy for election volatility is what's really a proxy for. But it's right there. I call it the Uber Bulls DJT. You can put it on if you're if you're a Trump guy. You can put it on. And if, if he wins election and this stock goes to 50 or something, you make a ton of money. But uh, like I said, I'm not recommending it. Just a calendar spread, though. It's nothing, nothing, uh, nothing that fancy. OK, so then also we have a, a bearish, a bearish Trump trade. So this right here is saying that that company, DJT, doesn't go over like 23 between now and Election Day which is November 15th, which is the, the expiration right after election. And that would be, you know, presumably if he loses the election and the holding company is basically worthless or whatever, this trade would make 47 bucks. All right. It's on about $60 risk. So, uh, you know, it's 50 bucks, but, um, but over the course of a month, that's, that's not terrible. But if the stock just kind of meanders around here, or let's say maybe he does get elected for whatever reason. He gets elected, but the stock goes up and not that much. It just kind of goes to about 19. This That's where this trade has max profit. This is called a broken wing butterfly. And you don't have, you don't have, uh, gosh darn it, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Anyway, for those of you guys who are still here, um, this trade's called a broken wing butterfly. And I was trying to show you, you don't have unlimited risk. You just you just need DJT. If you do a trade like this, you, um, and this is a great trade to do it on lots of companies. Any any company you're bearish on, you put on a, a trade like this could be a real advantage. Because what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I think this company's probably stock price probably going to zero. But even if it does go up, it's only going to go up a limited amount. In this case, no more than like 40 percent, you know, which isn't all that limited of amount. But the reason we can set it that far away is because the volatility is so jacked in this because of the election. So if you don't like, you know, Trump's chances and you want to take advantage of the volatility to bet against him, this is a way to do it. Um, and I'm not recommending this either. And uh but it's we're looking we're going to use it as a proxy so we're, we're just going to look at it and, and use it as a proxy we'll see we'll see how it comes out by the time of the election we'll see if what i said happens and if it comes true and that kind of stuff all right all right guys well I'll, i'm going to put that um i'll put the link to that uh hedge trade in the show notes in case you guys are interested okay all right well i think we've covered it all so you guys have a great weekend all right see ya